In the past, most of the emphasis on treating dyslipidemia has been directed towards LDL cholesterol. In the past, we looked at total cholesterol, then it evolved into LDL cholesterol. And the mainstay in the traditional cardiovascular community for treating LDL has been statins. The problem, though, is twofold. One, uh, a lot of people cannot take statins because of adverse effects, or they choose not to take them. And they need alternatives with either diet or nutritional supplements to get their LDL under control. The second problem, though, has been the evaluation of LDL. That has evolved now into looking at other parameters of LDL. And the two or three we're going to talk about today are LDL particle number, which is how many LDL particles are floating around in your bloodstream, the size of the LDL, and it can be small, medium, or large, and the last is whether or not it's been altered or modified. And we use terms like oxidation and glycation for the modification of LDL. The advancement in advanced lipid testing has allowed us to really look at these three parameters more accurately. And you really need to do this in order to determine risk, but also the treatment of the patient. We now know that LDL particle number drives the risk for coronary heart disease and heart attack. It's more predictive than any other parameter related to LDL. The LDL size is also important, and when both the LDL particle number and the LDL size are abnormal, the risk is confounded and even higher. But if you're aggressive in treating the LDL particle number to a low level that's normal, the particle size of LDL no longer becomes a confounding variable. It's no longer important. As treating the LDL particle number is the most important thing you want to do for reducing risk, you've got to be sure the laboratory that you use is accurate and consistent in the evaluation. And as you do your treatment, you're being sure that the LDL particle number consistently drops till you get to the normal for that particular lab. The LDL size, if it's very, very small, carries the greatest risk. That risk is because the small size allows the LDL to penetrate through the vascular endothelium, deposit in what's called the subendothelial layer, where it then forms lipid plaque, develops into foam cells, and eventually large plaque that can rupture and event a coronary heart disease and myocardial infarction. 